Hey all, I'm Raghav and welcome to my shop. Hey Raghav, this is my channel and today we're making a butter dish. Let's dive in. So if you can't tell, this is a collaboration. Uh, Raghav is a 14-year-old woodworker in India, and he is doing some amazing things with almost no tools at all. I saw what he was doing. It was like, hey, we should do a collaboration here. Uh, so I'm going to be making my butter dish, and he's going to be making his. It'd be kind of fun to see how two different ways of doing things. So definitely take a look at his channel. And at the end of this one, I'm going to have an opportunity where we're going to do something fun for him. So today we're going to use live oak and purple oak. This is a chunk of live oak that I have been using quite a bit. It is uh, a piece that I got from the Tally Ho project, and this was uh, was one of the, the faraks, the, the cutoffs in the end. And uh, I've used it for all sorts of pieces, and I'm probably going to use it a lot more. So I'm actually going to uh, resaw off about a half inch chunk. And I'm going to try and get the whole piece out of this big enough for two sticks of butter. So I'm going to be using a large handsaw with about a five PPI cut and rip down it. Be careful, don't kink your saw. <laughs> Resawing is one of those things that really scares a lot of people, but it's not something to really worry about. Um, it takes a little bit of patience and practice and a good sharp saw. A little bit of wax if the, uh, the, the block is binding up. This is actually starting to pinch on the blade. So adding a little bit of hard wax to it will make it run a lot smoother. Cut about halfway down from one side and then come back from the other side and make the two lines match up until we have a chunk of wood. Ta-da! <laughs> now we have that done, we can flatten the other side. So we flattened the first side earlier, made sure that was all good, and we can then bring this one back to match. Then we can do one edge, and this will give us our reference edge and face. And now we need the end. So one of these we're just going to square up. I was close enough that I just shot it. Shot it? I used the shooting board to square it up. The other one, I wanted to make it a bit shorter to match the length of the butter sticks. So we drew a line and then we can cut it off. There were some uh, chips on the edge of this that I was trying to get rid of. I didn't end up getting rid of them entirely. So there's a little bit of uh, uh, crunkiness in the corner, but it's not that big of a problem. You'll notice that later we have to uh, super glue a piece on. So we can shoot the other end nice and square, and then we are going to rip it down down for the last side. And this is where I'm hoping to get rid of most of that. And I did get rid of most of it, but there was still a little bit that was left. Using a tenon saw, which is a rip saw uh, with a little bit deeper cut, and uh, I can cut halfway down, flip the board over, and then cut from the other side. And this will allow me to, uh, to get all the way down. And it is important to chew your tongue. It allows you to give very accurate cuts. Uh, chewing your tongue is incredibly important. <laughs> Put it back in the vise and then plane it down. Uh, get your, your surfaces square to the sides and smooth and we're good to go. So I need to make two end caps and we're basically making a bed. Uh, if you imagine that where we have a headboard and a footboard and then the mattress. The mattress is what we just made so now we're going to make the, uh, the headboard and the footboard. I'm going to rip this down and then get both pieces out of this. So I'm going to rip it to the same width as the, the board that I just came out. And man, I love Purple Heart. It just comes to life. Um, really, really beautiful wood. Uh, a pain to use because of the switching grain. It has a reversing grain that uh, you have to be very, very careful with. A really nice, uh, well set up plane or a scraper. So now we have this cut to close to the same width. We need to then cut these into two pieces. So this will be the height of the butter dish because um, the grain will be running vertical on the two end caps and then end to end with the, uh, the bed of the butter bud. Butter bed. Butter. A better butter bed? <laughs> uh, yeah, I could take this over the shooting board, but I had my, my low angle here, and so I just decided to freehand it. As long as you don't go all the way through the board and pop out the other side, it actually works pretty well. Hey, my wife's actually helping out occasionally. She'll be doing a little bit more of the social media from time to time, so it's nice having her at home. So the other one um, it just had a little piece to cut off, and there were some splinters on the end of it uh, that I tried to get rid of, but there was a little bit that came out, and there was a, a small crack in this one. I probably should have gotten another one, but in the end, I work with what I've got, and I don't make perfection. I just make things decent. So we're going to make a uh, we're going to make a double tenon on the end of this to then stick into the purple heart. So I cut down the depth mark, which is the depth, which is the same thickness as the purple heart. And then I marked off uh, two tenons, and I'm just going to cut vertical. Um, I don't use a saw guide or anything like that. I just um, actually eyeball it, and you can actually see the reflection of the board in the saw, and that lets you know that you're cutting square. We can easily cut down either side there, 
and then chop out in the middle. Um, now, this will seem a lot like dovetails, and I originally was thinking about doing dovetails, but I decided I wanted it to go through and then to put in brass pins to hold it in place. So it cuts the exact same as dovetails, except for there are no dovetails. They're finger joints, but through tenon finger joints. <laughs> just an interesting, uh, uh, just playing with something different and trying a, a different way to do it. I always love trying new things, and you never know what you're going to find. So for this middle piece, we'll chop down close to the line, and then we can pair back to it, and then chop down a little more until we get it all the way out. And then we can put it right into that line and take it down. Make sure the chisel is vertical, give it a good tap, and clean it out. And uh, come in with a file. It's a great way to really sneak up on those lines. If you stay a little ways away from them, you can clean them all up with a file and get a really nice tight fit. At this point, I want to make sure I mark all of these and know exactly which way is up on all of them because I want all the joints to match. We're going to do a very similar thing here, um, laying out, but this isn't the depth of cut. This is where the top of the board is. Once I have that in place, I can lay out the board and transfer reality. Uh, that way I can put the marks exactly from the, uh, the pins into the board. Um, so in this case, am I doing pins first or am I doing tails first? I don't know. Um, but it's basically the same way as doing it with the dovetail, but uh, um, bringing it in with this. And then I can transfer the line from one side to the other. I set up the pin on one side, take it around the board and mark it from the other side. And that way I have the exact same marks coming in all the way around the board because I want to make sure these are transferred all the way around. Here you can actually see the reversing grain on this purple heart. Um, the bright stripes um, are where the grain is going with it and the dark stripes are where it's going against it. And uh, yeah. So we're going to remove most of the waste. Uh, makes it a lot easier to, to chop out. I thought about filing it back to square um, as this is a very easy way to do it with, with um, brass. And it probably would have taken about the same amount of time as chopping in, but I decided to actually go ahead and, and chop these in. Uh, if I clamp them in a vise and then hold them on the bench, I want to make sure that I don't accidentally split this out. Um, so putting it in the, the, the vise and then clamping the vise to the bench secures it all in place so it's not moving around. And I'm pounding into the bench rather than pounding into the air of the open vise. And this allows me to get really clean, clean cut. So I'm going to chop down on one side, flip it over, chop down on the other side, and then we have the process of fiddling these together. Um, to get them to fit in perfectly took a, a little bit more work than I was expecting, but uh, it, it comes out pretty well. The first side, it was a little bit more gappy than I would like, but the second side, yeah. Now, who knows what this is? Who knows what I'm doing here? That's, a, that's an interesting one. But here we can come into the file and really clean them up, get nice tight corners, and make sure everything's the way we want. And wiggle it back and forth until it goes in. We want it to slide all the way in. If it's, if it's wiggling in, that means at that point it's okay. We want to go to the point where it stops, and we only want to file out what needs to be filed out. We don't want to actually file away what we don't want um, because then we'll just be making more gaps. So it's a whole game of checking and pulling it apart and doing a little bit of work. Sneak up on it. Don't take off too much material. The slower you go, the better. And then sometimes you want to file the tenon, sometimes you want to file the mortise. It just goes back and forth to uh, wait for that perfect fit. And just a little bit of taps, it starts to slide down. On. I want this nice and tight um, because it is going to be on the counter, um, but I don't want it completely tight. Um, I don't want it to split out the wood. Uh, and in the end, I'm actually going to come in and put a brass pin in this so that it doesn't slide out. So theoretically, it would be washer safe, dishwasher safe, but you don't really want to soak wood products. Um, you want them to be uh, hand washed. <laughs> and there, that is one end on. So we got the other end on, and now we can drill out for a brass pin. And I got this um, 1 16th inch brass rod uh, that can go in. So once it's all together, I'm just going to drill in from one side and drill in from the other side. I'm not actually going to have the brass pin go all the way through. I'm just going to have it come in from one side to the other. This is actually really, really tight. Um, and uh, yeah, I got stuck. Oops. So you have to get pliers and pull it out. Um, but the, the pin fitting into this is incredibly tight. I have to pound it in place. Uh, so I don't need it to go all the way through. We're just going to come in from one side and then pound it down in, and it's good to go. No glue, nothing like that needed. So this whole project is no no glue. Um, except for one of them, I drilled the hole slightly too big, and so that one I ended up uh, um, I ended up using um, a five-minute epoxy on it. It was still pretty close. It was a nice tight fit, but it wasn't as tight as the others, so I had to go down one size on the drill bit. Then we can file it all down flat and flush, 
make sure that the brass is just touching. And here that piece was wiggling a little bit loose. I decided to use some super glue and activator. I used the, the wrench just to hold it in place. And I was able to secure most of it except for one piece eventually did snap off um, when I was cleaning it out. I always love this fuzz that comes up when you use the activator. <laughs> and uh, now it's on to the detailing. It's done and functional, we want to actually clean it up. And a card scraper is fantastic for this, especially the, the live oak um, and then the uh, the purple heart because it's switching grain, the card scraper can do well. And here you can actually see it is planing the brass. I don't know if you can pick it up in there. Here you can see little flecks of brass that come through um, that are actually from the card scraper cutting the brass. Yes, you can plane brass, you can plane aluminum. Um, I've done it quite a few times and so if you have a pin sticking up, you can clean it up with that. I want to create a rest on the top of this to hold the butter knife. And I have a special butter knife that I got that allows me to spread cold butter. Uh, really kind of a, a cool idea. Uh, so one of these will have a slot for the knife to fit down in. Um, unfortunately, the saw blade is a little bit too thin. So I have a knife um, edge file that will come in and create a slot for the knife to fit down on. On the other side where the handle comes in, originally I was thinking I'm going to carve out the handle because it's a little over an eighth inch thick. Um, and I thought, well, let's carve it down. And then I realized I'm, I'm probably going to be running into issues with, uh, with splitting off the grain because it is very delicate. So I decided to cut two um, uh, passes down either side and then realized I didn't cut them quite far enough. <laughs> Oops, well, we'll have to fix that out with a file. So I can come in with my eighth inch. Uh, my eighth inch chisel and pop out those little pieces and clean that out. But I want to make this a little bit wider so that the handle can actually fit into it. Um, I, I guessed it how wide and I should have actually marked it with a knife, but oh well. So I'm actually going to bring a file in and use this to widen that hole just a little bit. It's more or less working as a saw. You can see how it's cutting the ledges um, down either side until it fits in. And there you can see how the knife will rest on top of this and it has space for butter to be on both sides. Now we're going to chamfer the two ends. I want to just add a little bit of detail here. And we're going to put a very, very heavy, heavy chamfer um, on either end tapering in towards the middle. So if you skew the plane so that it is at 45 degrees and then run it across, you can actually uh, go across the ingrain and have a nice uh, clean face on there. Card scraper is great for this really difficult grain on the purple heart and, and cleaning it up and getting it beautiful. Um, no sandpaper needed. Just scrape it down with a card scraper and you'll get this gorgeous finish uh, that really uh, pops out the grain when you put some oil on it. And here we're going to be using the plane to then chamfer all the other edges. Round everything off. We don't want any harsh edge that scrapes on things. Uh, just adds a little bit to it. I've never been a huge fan of rounded corners. I like to add a visible chamfer. It just, it just is uh, appealing. Some of these it's easier to come in with the chisel. You'll see how I kind of shear it rather than just pushing it and that allows it to, to, to cut in. And you can slide the chisel up as you go across and you get that nice corner on there. Some of these I'm going to be doing a cut in. So I'll start in on one side and plunge it in and then come out and produce that on the other way. Just want to make sure that it's going with the grain and some places you have to turn around and go the other direction otherwise you'll get split outs. Even tiny little pieces like this just uh, don't want anything sticking up to be uh, to be rounding over. Continue the scraping and get it ready. This is this one actually took a lot more um, detail time than I was expecting. Um, and I, yeah, the, even the, the little edges on here coming in and chamfering those down. Just put the bevel on the chisel down and run it along. You'll get these nice little curls, make you very very happy, and uh, you'll get a nice edge that feels good and looks decent. So for the finish, we are using my homemade boiled linseed oil. This is my favorite food safe finish and it is, um, it's, it's just a great finish. It will polymerize um, in a matter of 24 hours and, and it's basically good to go um, as soon as after that. If you do it before that, you just taste the linseed oil, which I don't know if I really mind that. <laughs> but the way it brings out the live oak and this purple heart, it's just, oh, it's happy. Uh, especially with having butter on this, it's going to be constantly uh, greased up from the butter um, so I can, I can stop and reapply the oil from time to time. So here you can see how it works. This is a hard stick of butter. It came straight out of the refrigerator um, and I can put it on here and with this um, knife it has all these holes along the edge that allow you to scrape it and you get these wisps that come off and these then you can then spread on butter, on bread. Very soft bun and they, they spread on there. You don't 
spread it like a hot butter, but you get these chunks that you can then move around and place them evenly around the piece. And uh, I really, really like this. It's kind of a, an ingenious thing. I've got a link to it down below if you want to see that. But I uh, had a lot of fun with this project. And you should definitely go ch take a look at uh, Ragov's project. Um, he did something very similar, but in his own style and way. And uh, both came out really cool. Yeah, Looking forward to using this for that. a long time. Lots of fun. So there you have it. Here is the butter dish that has the knife that I absolutely love because you can spread cold butter with it. Finished with boiled linseed oil. Wait, 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 wait. But what if you don't have some fancy homemade boiled linseed oil? Like the store-bought version that has all those chemical dryers. Well, yes, that is true. Um, I do use my own homemade boiled linseed oil because it doesn't have chemical dryers in it and it's a really nice finish for foods. But uh, Raghav, what do you use? So um, in my shop, I generally use a cooking oil or olive oil to polish uh, if I require like a food safe finish because that works just as well. And since we use cooking oil to uh, in while cooking, of course, so that would mean it's food safe. So that actually uh, gives a nice, uh, it pops the grain really well. And also it gives a really nice finish. So you can use cooking oil or olive oil that works really well if you don't have like access to a fancy homemade boiled linseed oil without the chemical dryers. So those that's a really great alternative. Well, there you go. Basically any oil that polymerizes can be a great food safe finish. Uh, this is a really fun project and just a lot of fun. Now I do want to stop in here and say I want to do something special for Raghav. He is a 14 year old woodworker in India and he has basically no tools at all, but he still does some amazing things. Uh, some of the projects he's been whipping out have been just mind blowing. So I've actually started a GoFundMe and this is a surprise for him. I'm not telling him about this until he watches the video. And we are going to raise some money to buy him tools. I'm gonna to try and buy tools there so we don't have to ship them, but there are probably gonna be a few things that we're going to actually ship to him. So if you'd like to help out with that, I'll leave a link to the uh, GoFundMe down below. And let's put a smile on his face and get him some tools and see what he can do with actual things to make them. So I hope you like this project. Uh, this was a fun one for me. It's a great one to hold the knife that I absolutely love, which I have a link to that down below. Uh, if you want to try something like this, I'd definitely say go take a look at Ragov's video and see what he made. Uh, he is doing something really cool that I, I think is, is very awesome and doing it with basically no tools at all. So definitely take a look at that. So I think that'll do it for now. Uh, if you did like the video, please hit like, comment, share, subscribe. Make sure you go over to Ragov's channel and check out his stuff. Uh, again, phenomenal things there. And I do want to say a huge thank you to all the patrons on Patreon and members here on the channel. Everyone who's keeping this channel going, thank you for that. If you'd like to find out more about that, you can click the little join button or become a patron on Patreon. There's a link to that down in the description below. So on that note, I think I'll do it for now. Until next time, have a wonderful day. Whatever oil you use to finish your butter dish, make sure it fully polymerizes. Otherwise, boiled linseed flavored oil, which I do like.